सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग यूएचवी थ्री द कोर्स यूएचवी थ्री एंड इन मॉड्यूल वन वी डिड फोर लेक्चर्स एंड नाउ वी आर ऑन द फिफ्थ लेक्चर एंड इन बिटवीन द फोर्थ एंड फिफ्थ लेक्चर वी आल्सो इंट्रोड्यूस्ड स्टेप वन ऑफ एक्सरसाइज वन ऑब्जर्विंग द सेल्फ बाय द सेल्फ एंड वी नीड टू कीप प्रैक्टिसिंग द सेल्फ ऑब्जर्वेशन एक्सरसाइज एवरी डे सो दैट we become familiar with it so that we are able to see more and more within so while that is going on we went on with the lecture 5 about self being the center in the human being self being the important part in the human being and body being used as a tool and we were talking about why we are saying that because ultimately it is the self who is the seer who is the doer who is the experiencer and the body is just being used like a tool uh, with this we had asked you to observe and see if you could appreciate this in yourself to notice in the assignment yesterday we had asked you to not only observe the imagination that part we have to keep doing but also reflect on how you as the self are the seer doer and experiences and how you are instructing the body or reading the sensation from the body from time to time as and when you consider it important so if you have any observations regarding that we we'll take it now also yesterday in the chat i noticed a couple of questions which uh, caught my eye later after the session was over which i thought uh, we must address somebody had mentioned what about pain who feels the pain the body or the self so what do you people think you can mention in the chat who feels pain is it the body that feels pain or is it the self that feels the pain yes so we are able to see self is the one that feels the pain you see what happens is what we refer to as pain this is a term that we are using in the case of the body what is happening the body there are some physiochemical changes the body is a self organized unit when we come to the body we'll talk more about that and it tries to come back to harmony and whenever there is disharmony there will be some changes that happen in the body some physiochemical changes the body will not have a problem with it it will not be nurturing for the body but the body is just trying to get back into harmony that's the self organization of the body now in that process a lot of times we'll notice that we are the ones who are disturbing this harmony in the body and when there is this disharmony one of the or some of the physiochemical changes that is causing us discomfort because we are reading that sensation we call that pain so the feeling of the pain is in me the physiochemical part of the process is happening in the body so this are we able to see this ah uh, yes madam namaskar yes. namaskar to all madam in the yesterday uh, today morning in the process of my observation what i observed uh, i am the self only that feeling i have but the so called uh, what can i say the consciousness you termed it self that's why i am calling that self huh? i don't know <laughs> mm-hmm. so i am that i felt like that so whenever i am going out of uh, 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 my essence i can say uh, out of me i can say suppose mm-hmm. when i am with the thoughts and all who is i and who is me uh i am that self i feel then uh, who is me uh me is uh, that self only but whenever i am with the thought and coming back i am not that where i am where have i gone that i felt i am not that but where have i gone but i am this self only <laughs> that the feeling that feeling i got <laughs> i'm uh that please could you please uh, make it clear Uh, well, I didn't get the clarity from you. Clarity. So when suppose uh, when we observe uh, the feeling uh, uh, or the thought, 
Mm-hmm. When we flow with the thought, mm-hmm. uh, we cannot observe. When we mm-hmm. are uh, uh, away from the thought, then we can observe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when I am without any thought, uh, when when I am uh, as a pure observer, uh, then I feel I am that only. I am not without other than that. Or you are able to observe the thought. Ah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not observing the thought. When I am going with the thought, I am, uh, uh, I'm forgetting that. Ah, yes. uh, uh, that, uh, that I feel, I feel, I felt. That's true. Oh, thank you, madam. That's true because uh-huh. now we are flowing with the thought. We can't see ourselves as anything more than this thought. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, madam. But when I came back from that, I felt I'm not that. I am not that thought. That also I felt, but because uh, you were observing, so you know. Yeah, 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 madam. You can see that not that meaning. Mm. I am not just this thought. I I can see the thought, but I am more than the thought. Obviously, that's how I can see it. Okay, okay, okay. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, madam. So that feeling I got uh, in the morning. Very nice. Thank you, madam. What is observation, isn't it? What, madam? I am not getting. This is what is observation. Ah, yeah, yeah, madam. Yeah, able madam. To observe the thoughts. Yeah, yeah, madam. Yes. Oh, right. thank you, thank you, madam. Also, there was a question yesterday in the chat about thoughts from mind and thoughts from heart. Somebody had put forward this question, and I'd like to address that because so, it's significant. So, separate yeah. term has come into picture. Yes. Could you please clear it, madam? Yes, yes, we'll clear it. Thank you. Okay. So this question came up in the chat yesterday. What about thoughts from the mind and thoughts from the heart? See, when we think about, when we are not sure about who we are, if I think I am the body, I will try to place everything in the body. So I will say, this is coming from my mind. This is coming from my heart, this is coming from the brain, this is coming from this part of the body, that part of the body. I try to put everything in the part of the body. Like now, in medical science, we keep saying the brain does this, the brain does that, and the brain is the most important part, and that is in charge of everything. Well, the brain is conveying some, relaying this information to the different parts of the body, but is the brain doing that thinking is the brain doing the deciding is the brain the decision maker or am i the self the decision maker i decide something and i convey it or i instruct give the instruction as information to the brain and then the brain further relays it to different parts of the body now look at it this way when i am thinking something just keep it as an open proposal We don't have to believe it or disbelieve it. When I am thinking something and I am thinking about some routine task, something, some work that needs to be done, I am doing that with the, you know, thought processes involved, maybe analyzing is involved. All this is predominantly involved. And then I am relaying this information to the brain. And then brain is relaying it to the rest of the body. The brain is housed where it is housed in the head. But when we don't have that clarity, when we say mind, we are talking about the self. But if we don't have clarity about the self, we think everything is happening in the brain. So we call that thoughts. People may refer to it as thoughts from the mind. When it comes to feeling, especially in relationships, human-human relationships, you may have intense emotion. Now, this feeling has an impact on you know, the body also. Every thought, every feeling that you have in the self, every unit has some impact on every other unit. So every thought, every feeling you have in the self has some impact on the body. And this feeling, a strong emotion, this has maximum effect on the heart in the body. So now when you talk with lot of or you're thinking with you know along with lot of emotion regarding some family member somebody close to you something like that now it may impact the heart in the body 
so this kind of thing some people say you know thinking from the heart but thinking the heart does not have the capacity to think the thinking is happening in the self the feeling is happening in the self and with that some impact may be there on some parts of the body and when we read that sensation we think it's happening there itself so i would say keep that possibility open no need to refute it no need to believe it right now but just keep that open we'll take one more question then we'll go forward because we're going very slow with this we need to go a little faster namaste didi namaste all namaste um, didi this question like uh, we are discussing um, say we say pain mm -hmm. now the self is associating a word or feeling with a sensation mm -hmm. so typically it's a sensation from a body mm -hmm. but uh, when we associate it as a pain or pleasure i mean mm -hmm. that that is again a, a meaning associated by self yes right yes yeah so now when we see the uh, things like again is this a sanskar in some sense that uh, when uh, some something happens suppose say injury has happened there is a cut on the body now there is some certain kind of sensation which is coming now um, now i i feel there is a natural Uh, tendency to secure the body i feel that this is the uh, this is a discomforting thing even discomfort is a feeling right i mean that is that gets associated with the sensation and then that kind of uh, samskara has got formed that now something is cut it is maybe uh, dangerous or Uh, not good from the preserving of the body or functioning of the body and then we associate a meaning that is called as pain it's probably in the course of evolution uh, this kind of sanskara has happened and then we associated that kind of sensation to a pain and other kind of sensation to a maybe pleasure and they these are kind of doors for us to uh, secure our body uh, yeah i'll put it in other words yeah okay yeah. see we are constantly living with this expectation from outside whether it be from the body whether it be from anywhere else outside the body is also not me yeah so for me body is also outside so now yeah. if i expect you know for everything abhi to even if we forget about pain for instance mm. any sensation like that supposing you look at the sensation of what you are seeing through the eyes so yes. now there is a lizard on the wall yes i see that lizard and i associate it with something that i dislike okay suppose now i react a certain way isn't yes. it somebody yes. sees the same thing and is calm they don't is. consider it as something they dislike yeah. they accept it as one more creature yes so they don't react now of course this is related to the meaning we are giving to it and you will find that many sanskars like that we keep gathering over time and we'll come to that when we do the exercises you you're familiar with it we'll do all of that in more detail but essentially it is expectation really we are just working at the level of expectation whatever i like i try to continue that whatever i dislike i try to avoid it yes. so this sensation which i call pain i dislike it so i try to avoid it i may take pain killer i may take so many i mean do so many things to try to avoid this pain yeah. isn't it yeah. so this is all part of something okay. that i am doing almost mechanically mm. 
I am just expecting things from outside. And I expect that things should be nice. The sensation mm. should be nice for me. Otherwise, I try to avoid that. Mm. You will yes. find even for pain, different people have different threshold for pain. Correct. Somebody says they can't tolerate even one small pin poking. Another person may take a big injection without feeling any discomfort or without really having too much of a problem. So what Correct. is that? It is just about our likes and dislikes yeah. and how, what kind of meaning we attach to it. But we'll come to that when we come to the exercise. Yeah. Only, I mean, the one thing is like, has it served the purpose of security of the body? It's like, sometimes, you know, it's an indicator of something. Yes. yes. So actually, if you look at sensation, sensation is supposed to give us information about the outside. Okay. okay. The rest of the meanings I am attaching to it. Attaching it to it. But if Through I just look experience. at the sensation as a sensation, mm, mm. if I notice that there is some sensation in the body, this is leading to pain. I don't have to react about the pain. I don't have to keep crying and, oh God, why is this happening to me <laughs> yeah. and all of that. I can yeah. just see that there is some disharmony in the body, which is leading to this sensation. So Correct. what can I do to fix this disharmony in the body? True. Now, when I have that right feeling for the body, the feeling to nurture the body, to take responsibility for the body, then I will do whatever it takes to fix that disharmony in the body rather than react about this and try to avoid it. You see? Yeah, understood. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we should go forward. There is one more hand raised, but we'll go forward now. Um, yes. So, if you look at, you know, the self, the activities within the self, we've been talking about it to a large extent. The B2 block, where you have all this imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, tasting, all these activities are going on. This is where, you know, all the, um, before we become aware of the B1 block or the higher activities, this is where all the activity is happening in the self. When we are observing, when we start in the workshop, we start with exploring the natural acceptance, referring to the natural acceptance. That natural acceptance is from the point of the highest activity in the self. Even though we have not reached that activity, even though we have not become aware of that activity, still like a haze, there is a glimpse of it in the form of the natural acceptance. It's like, it's a, you know, it was a sunny day, but the cloud came over. Now you don't see the sun, but you have some idea that it is day and it is not night. Some thing, some light filters through. So similarly, you, through the natural acceptance, you are able to get this glimpse of how the existence is. And when you refer to that, right, there you can see that ability is there to see. So when we eventually get to becoming aware of the activity of realization, we will be able to see everything in the existence the way it actually is. That is the true meaning of self is the seer. That you are able to see everything in this existence. Right now, what we think of as seeing is only using the sensation in the body. Therefore, we think the body is the most important a lot of times. Now, if I can't see, then what's the use? But seeing is happening largely through the self. This part, if we can see within ourselves, we will be able to notice that whenever there is a problem with the body, we try to use some other sensation in the body 
but essentially i am the one who wants to see i am the one who is deciding i am the one who is choosing i am the one who is selecting i am the one who is tasting and deciding what to do next and then i give the instruction to the body so it's self you know from b1 you can say that is the true seer and if you look at b2 block there you are actually you know having the thoughts the selecting tasting has to do with the outside world you know thoughts and expectations from the outside and based on all this you give the instruction to the body so you are the doer so the understanding part the realization part is happening in the b1 block the instructions to the body all of that interaction with the body all that we are using the b2 block also now these are both part of the self they are not something that can be segregated and you will see you experience so you will experience different feelings based on our own level of competence so if i have not been able to ensure my feeling within myself my feeling will keep shifting based on whatever i am getting from outside so if there is some discomfort some problem in the body some disharmony which i think of as pain i feel unhappy why because my feeling is not ensured within me through the b2 b1 block i have not been able to ensure the feeling within myself so now my feeling i am deciding based on whatever is happening outside and i think that that is leading to my unhappiness but when i get you know um aware of the higher activities of realization understanding contemplation now these can be the guiding factor for all my desires thoughts expectations so this arrow that is shown from the b1 to the b2 block that is just that that now becomes the motivator that becomes the guide for my feeling particularly if you look at contemplation contemplation has to do with being able to see the relationship with other units and when you see the relationship the natural outcome of that is your participation in that relationship so now instead of trying to get the right feeling from outside now my focus shifts to having the right feeling within myself so you can see the difference now there is possibility of continuity because this is entirely up to me this is entirely in my control but when i was trying to have the right feeling based on whatever is happening outside that you can see is you know how much can you control in your environment we try to control other human beings that they should be like us they should think like us possible not possible next slide please so this is just showing some more detail about what we were talking about so if you look at the contemplation part the clarity of relationship we'll talk about this more in depth later also this is just uh, for now so when we contemplate when we start exploring and this we become aware of the activity of contemplation within us then we slowly are able to see the relationship between the units or the natural characteristic when we come to the nature and the four orders we'll talk more in depth about all this so when we have clarity of this we are able to see our participation in the larger order so now our focus shifts to my role what is my role in this what is my participation prior to that it may have been that we are working at the level of expectation and so we want things should happen outside 
things should get better society so many problems are there why doesn't the government do this why doesn't so and so do that we expect somebody else to take make things okay so that we can be happy but now our focus shifts now my focus shifts to my participation so being happy i can do things to try and make that difference outside but in the process i am not unhappy i have become happy because i can ensure my feeling within myself and with that right feeling now i can work outside so that makes all the difference because now i realize that i can be happy even though the situation outside may not have changed or may have changed only marginally because that was never the cause of my unhappiness the cause of my unhappiness was within me and i can fix it from within this part becomes clear and my role in every relationship becomes more clear similarly when we become aware of the activity of understanding we become aware of everything in nature how it is self organized every unit is working in a very definite manner so we call that innateness and like i said we'll talk about it more when we come to nature like it is innate for a plant to grow that is part of it every every unit in nature you will find is self organized if you look at the self we are also a part one unit in nature self is also self organized self organized in the sense it is my nature wanting to be in harmony that is innate to me i cannot change that and that being in harmony is possible when my feeling is in line with my natural acceptance and we already spoke of what my natural acceptance is for it is for coexistence it is for harmony it is for relationship so whenever my feeling is in line with that i am in harmony whenever it is not in line with that i am in disharmony that is part of my self organization i cannot change that so like that you will find that every unit if you look at every unit is self organized trying to be in harmony and of course the highest activity in the self is the activity of realization where if you are at that point when you are at that point one has clarity of this coexistence that is there in the existence you are able to see the submergence of all the units in space the space is the subtlest reality and so right now we may not have the competence to be able to see that space we have it as information but we should keep it open until we see it for ourselves don't just believe it one can take it as information and keep it open for oneself till we are able to directly see it because ultimately we want to be able to see that coexistence in the existence we want to be able to see the submergence of the units in space and be able to say that yes this is why it is like how it is this is why there is the relationship is there it becomes authenticated for us one is we are able to see it so now it is very clear and with that we you know decide that we are you know all our lower activities should be in line with this that is authentication that happens when we are able to see that realization when we are have to when we when we are able to see that coexistence that activity of realization it's called realization because you just see it and you realize that's how it is nothing that you have to do you just have to understand it realize it see it 
and then live according to it. So similarly, when you understand the harmony in nature, when you are able to see this self-organization in every unit, now, when you look at determination, what is that determination? It's not about one thing that I have to do today. It is about getting all these activities in line with that. Now, that will play a role in everything, you know, from my feeling to thought to expectation and behavior work outside. In everything, it will reflect because now that is my base. That is my foundation. So, like that, with the once we have the guidance of the higher activities, now the lower activities get set right. Now there is no longer confusion about getting things from outside and not being sure. Is this right or is that right? Somebody says this, is this what I should do? Or should I do something else? Now I know because I can see it myself. I can see it directly. Next slide, please. This is all interconnected, so we'll just go to the next slide. Yeah. So on the one hand is the realization within, being able to see the coexistence, being able to appreciate the space, being able to see the submergence of all the units in the space. Now with that, the authentication comes. You are able to bring it, you know, in line, now your understanding has come totally in line with that realization of the space. Now the whole picture becomes clear. With that, that determination that now I need to, you know, set my feeling right, set my thoughts right. And it's going to happen very quickly because any moment that your feeling and thought are not in line with that, you will notice the discomfort very quickly because now you are aware of that higher activity. So you will want to make it right. You will want to be in that harmony. With that, of course, working for the participation in the larger order. Now my role is very clear. Now with my role being clear, now I work on my desires are totally in line with this. That becomes my focus. Not trying to get things from outside, but with all of this picture within me, I try to work in the outside world. Now there's nothing that I want from outside for myself. Now I am happy within. And with that happiness within, I work outside for others for the happiness of others, for just being able to live in harmony and helping others to live in this harmony. So all my desires are fixed with that. With that desire, now my analyzing, comparing, my thoughts come in line with that. When my thoughts come in line with that, my expectation from the outside is also more realistic. And I am now doing my work outside with the rest of nature, I am with my behavior with the other human beings, you know, there will be justice. I'll be working for mutual happiness, not just my happiness. When I work with nature, I'll be working for mutual prosperity. And when I participate in the larger order, it will be with that view of the universal human order. So everything that I do outside will be an expression of that realization that I have had within. So this is what the whole expanse is. Right from getting that or being able to see the reality inside to working outside to make that real, to make it that way like the way everything else in the existence is. We keep saying that, you know, human being is the one that is not in line. So this is what ultimately we need to do. Work for the realization within, 
and with that a natural outcome will be that we work for you know the larger good outside with that view within us so our focus shifts to our participation in all of this whether it be our interaction with other human beings whether it be working with the rest of nature whether it be working for the larger good with that universal human order in view so the outcome the natural outcome is this expression outside on the side of this you will see certain terms written about happiness peace satisfaction bliss these are terms of i mean these are just words but to experience this within is the key so i mean you can give it whatever words but ultimately being in realization or you know being able to see that submergence that space that sort of thing is you know bliss or super bliss or whatever you want to call it but the important thing is not the words the important thing is to be able to see this is what our what we are working for and ultimately this is what we want to achieve and get to so we can take some questions okay namaste namaste everybody okay really there is a confusion means uh, um where from the activity starts and where ends um with an which example activity? which activity uh the activities like um, the selecting imaging comparing testing and lastly how it is related to our behavior for mutual happiness and uh, all these things so starting to the end as a flow chart can you uh, if you can uh, give it with, with an example so it will be more clear i am not very clear about it see the activities that are going on in the self you will notice i mean we have been talking about it no seeing the thought seeing the feeling you will notice that these activities are already going on we are not talking of beginning or end they are continuous can you notice that yes activities are going on ha huh. now these activities are ultimately deciding what you are going to do outside isn't it hmm. i mean whatever you do outside you will notice that you think about it you make some plan no yes yes so all of this whatever activity at least in the b2 block you can see that you know you are feeling something you are thinking something all of that is going on within you and based on that now you express it outside through the body yes, yes? so my point is the thought is the starting point for from the all the activities uh, they are enrooted no that's not what we are saying right now what is happening is if we see largely we are unaware of the b1 block so hmm. we are functioning from the b2 block yes now in the b2 block if you see what you are calling starting point actually that is not the starting point but it will seem like that hmm. that it is the desire hmm. some desire yes what you want to be yeah now with that you have some thought so if i say i want to be happy now how to be happy you know i may not consciously ask these questions but this is what is happening this is what is going on all the time isn't it yes so how to be happy i will have some thoughts about it hmm i will have some expectation from the outside hmm. let this become like this then then you know i'll be happy 
Why is that? That's because that's all I can see. Right now, the higher activities, I am not aware of them. So all I can see is this. I am trying to get it from outside. This is what we do in the first workshop, we say, no? You did the first workshop? Yeah. Online workshop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that, we talk about our sources of motivators of imagination. What are the three sources? We said preconditioning is one large one sensation is another large one and a very small percentage is coming from natural acceptance you recall that yes sir. I get it. Yeah. now this is because these higher activities are hidden we are not aware of them hmm. so right now our desires are coming from some preconditioning whatever we have gotten from outside yes sir. For instance, you know, you grew up in a certain environment, you know, you heard certain things, you saw certain things, you, you know, interacted with people who believed something. So now you also believe that. Huh. And so that becomes your desire, that this is what I want, because yes. this is what you have seen outside. Huh. Isn't it? Yes. So this is a part of your preconditioning. Now that is guiding your desire. Hmm. That is one large part. Another large part is sensation. Like we were saying, no? Yeah. You feel that the temperature on the skin doesn't feel so good. You don't like that sensation. So hmm. you try to make it more likable, whatever you like. Hmm. So if it's hot, you don't like the heat try to arrange for a cooler or a air conditioner or something like that so that the sensation on the skin becomes cooler isn't yeah. it now that became your desire yeah. why because you want to be happy and you think that happiness is linked with this that yeah. when i when the skin becomes you know when the temperature outside is conducive that sensation is nicer, I'll be happier. So let me get a cooler. So like that, it goes on. Yeah. So everything, all our desires, we're trying to get from outside. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But at the root, we want to be happy. That's what it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, this happiness is within me. This we are not able to see until we become aware of the higher activities. Once yes. we even reach that contemplation part, once we start seeing, you know, the relationship with the other units, once we start focusing on our role, our participation, then we work on ensuring our own feeling, regardless of the outside. Now let it be whatever it is outside. Let it be whatever I heard before. Now I can see that when I have the right feeling, I am happy. Now it doesn't have much to do with the outside. Can you see the difference? No, here is the, my problem is uh, how mm -hmm. participation in larger order mm -hmm. that can give me happiness. Yeah. Participation meaning your role. Okay. Like mm -hmm. for instance, I'll give an example. If I don't see my participation, hmm, supposing participation is your, this is the lowest of the B1 block activities, isn't it? Yes. Contemplation. Yes. So supposing contemplation is not there for me. Hmm. I'm not aware of any of these purple block activities, hmm. right? Hmm. Now, I'm not getting any guidance from inside. I'm not referring to the natural acceptance. So I'm just looking outside, isn't it? Yes. There is no participation from my side. I want things outside to become better so that I can be happy. This is my whole view of looking at things. Yes. yes. Isn't it? At present, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. That, okay, you know, the family should behave this way. People should, you know, students should be like this. My workers should be like this. Mm. 
that PN who sits in the office, he doesn't do any work, he should behave better. So our whole focus is in somebody else being better so that I can be happy. That yes, so sir. that I can be happy may not be clear to me, but that's what we are doing. We are unhappy when they are not in line with what we think they should do. Isn't yes. it? Yes. Sure. <clears throat> but when I become aware of the activity of contemplation, now I see my relationship with every other person every other human being, not just my immediate family, not those linked to me by the body, but everybody. Hmm. And as I see this relationship, not only with other human beings, but with the rest of nature, now my hmm. feeling is for them, isn't it? Hmm. I feel for them. Now, I'll be able to see that that fellow who is crying, who is shouting, earlier, I was looking at it that he should improve so that I can be happy. Now I see he is only suffering. That's yes. why he is shouting. Can you see the difference? Yes. <clears throat> so now I am with me. I have the right feeling. Now I have compassion for the other fellow. Hmm. And for him, what I can do to help him, that becomes my focus. Yes. So being happy within, mm. I work for helping him. And mm. in this way, because I see my relationship with every other unit, mm. I am participating for, you know, things to be in the way of the existence or what is naturally acceptable to me. In that way, I am working for the outside, but not with unhappiness. Not that I get disturbed when people don't listen to me. But I have compassion for them. So I am already happy within. With that happiness within, I am working outside. Can you see that? Yes. So that means that uh, good relationship within for others. That is my participation. Yeah, participation is more than... Um, Ultimately, you're looking at what is it that we want, no? That participation, it will start from whatever our vision is. If I can see only my family, I will look at my participation in this family unit. No? What is my role here? If the maid didn't come or if the dishes are not done, I will not complain. I will say, okay, I can do it. I'll do it. I'll not be unhappy about it. I will see my role. Can you see that? As my vision grows, I will notice that this, what I call family, this circle is becoming wider and wider. Now I have more and more of the units, more and more of the human beings, more and more of the other units. I start becoming, they all get included in my area of relationship. So as my vision grows, my participation in that larger order keeps growing. And ultimately, I have a relationship with all. So till I get there, and till I'm participating for that, what is my natural acceptance, I will not reach that. Isn't it? So I will keep working for that. Yes. Can you see that? Hmm. Yes. All right. We are almost out of time. We have a few minutes. Let us just take one odd um, question. Uh, <clears throat> Mom, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, Mom, uh, yesterday one uh, incident was happened. Like uh, uh, I am doing Is it exam. To this, what we are discussing now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Huh. Uh, Yesterday, actually, as a teacher, we are doing exam duty, right? So that time, uh, maybe the student is uh, cheating or in the exam hall, they are discussing. So I suppose to avoid the situations or if I will do strictly follow what is the examination rule, then I have a frictions with the student. And I felt that there is a opposition of feelings within me. So in this context, I will keep quiet. Certainly, I, I 
think that uh, that time jp uh, my feeling uh, is going of uh, uh, opposition of feeling right A against the student yeah, i got your question see um, important thing is we will go by the rules not that we allow anybody to do whatever they like there are certain rules in place so we'll go by the rules but we'll have the right feeling right now you're not giving me that option you're giving me feeling of opposition and whether to keep quiet or to you know do something outside so the outside part is one part of it inner what is happening within me that is more important both are important but within me with the right feeling when i do things outside i will go by the rules but then i will also have compassion for that person i will try to help him out work it out so that he can take the right path i'll try to show him that you know it is important to understand things you can get by by cheating in one exam but in life how are you going to get by when you don't know so it is important to understand and i will help him in whatever way possible so that he can you know i can help him to understand so i will do it with the right feeling then there is no opposition from him no opposition from me can you Mom, see that yeah yeah that that was there but at a particular moment you have like students start arguing i have not done it or i am doing and literally uh, she caught there was written everything in his hand and the paper was cancelled yeah see i already discussed this right now with the right feeling you can do many things just yeah. reflect on it we don't have much time now we are out of time but see these are everyday incidents if we are clear about our role our participation then things become easy to handle outside then we don't have questions about particular incidents right so i think we'll stop here if there's anything further we can continue your discussion at 5:30 in the morning but i think i already uh, discussed it uh, sunil ji